JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week June the 15th until June the 19th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer first. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, we have a very busy week ahead of us with four central banks deciding on monetary policy, the Bank of Japan, the SNB, the Norges Bank and the Bank of England. Only the Bank of England is nearly certain to proceed with uh, changes, with policy changes, with officials expected to expand their QE purchases as the current target is set to be reached in the beginning of July. We also have Fed Chair uh, Powell's semi-annual testimony on monetary policy before Congress. We have an EU leader summit on Thursday and Friday. And with regards to the data, we get the employment, the UK employment report, the UK CPIs, the UK, the UK retail sales, Canadian CPIs, and Canada's uh, uh, retail sales as well. But let's take things from the beginning. On Monday, during the Asian morning, we already got China's retail sales, industrial production, and fixed asset investment, all for May. Retail sales and fixed asset investment slid by more than anticipated, while industrial production rose uh, by less than uh, the forecast suggested. Now, as for the rest of today's events, during uh, the European morning from the Eurozone, we have the trade uh, balance uh, for April, for which no forecast is uh, currently available. While later in the day from the US, we get the New York Empire State Manufacturing Index for June. This index is expected to have risen, but to have stayed within the negative territory. Specifically, it is expected to have risen to minus 27.5 from minus 48.5. Now on Tuesday, during the Asian morning, the Bank of Japan will announce its, its uh, decision on monetary policy. The previous meeting of the bank on May the 22nd was an emergency one. Officials uh, kept interest rates and the target of their long-term government bond yields uh, unchanged, but announced the start of a new small business uh, lending program. Policymakers are not expected to proceed with uh, any changes to their main policy tools this time either, but it would be interesting to see whether they will expand further some of their emergency lending programs. Having said that, though, I don't believe that this uh, meeting will uh, result in major moves in the yen. The Japanese currency has been has been wearing its safe haven suit and has been linked to the broader market sentiment. Uh, remember that last week we saw the yen strengthening uh, on uh, fears that uh, uh, on fears of a, of a second wave of the coronavirus. Now, with regards to the European day, uh, we get the UK employment data for April. The unemployment rate is expected to have risen to 4.5%, while the net change in employment is expected to show that the economy has lost 65,000 jobs in the three months to April after gaining 2011K in the three months uh, to March. Average uh, earnings, including bonuses, are forecast to have slowed to 1.4% year over year from 2.4%, while the excluding, er the excluding uh, bonuses uh, rate is uh, anticipated to, uh, to is anticipated to have declined to 1.9 percent year over year from uh, from 2.7 percent. Now, according to the K to the KPMG and REC UK report on jobs, permanent staff appointments and temporary billing fell at the sharpest rates in the survey's history. While the, avail the availability of candidates rose to the first rose rose for the first time uh, since uh, April 2013, um, with the rate of expansion being the steepest since uh, November 2009. 
This supports the notion with regards to an increase in the unemployment rate. What's more, the weaker demand for staff also drove renewed declines in starting salaries, which enhances the case for notable slowdowns in earnings. Germany's final CPIs for May and, um, and the nation's uh, ZDW survey for June are also due to be released. The final inflation prints are expected to confirm their preliminary ones, while the ZW survey is expected to reveal improvement in both the current conditions and sentiment indices. Eurozone's wages and the labor cost index for the first quarter are also on the agenda. Now, in the US Fed Chair Jerome Powell will testify on the FOMC's semi-annual monetary policy report before Congress. He will testify via video conference uh, before the Senate Banking Committee on Tuesday, while on Wednesday he will present the same testimony before the House Financial Services uh, Committee. Although investors are likely to be on the lookout for uh, his uh, view on the economic outlook and the, few and the future steps of the Fed, we don't expect uh, those events to result, uh, to result in any fire fireworks. After all, we heard uh, his view just uh, last week after the FOMC decision when, he, when we also got updated economic uh, projections. Thus, market participants are already aware of the Fed's view on how the economy may perform from now onwards. Now, as for the US data, we have retail sales, industrial and manufacturing production, all for May. They are all expected to have rebounded after tumbling in April. Moving to Wednesday, Asian trading, New Zealand's current account balance for the first quarter and Japan's trade balance for May are coming out. New Zealand's current account deficit uh, of 2.66 billion New Zealand dollars is forecast to have turned into a surplus of 1.48 billion uh, dollars, while Japan's uh, trade deficit is expected to have narrowed to uh, 560 billion yen from 9,932 billion. Ahead of the EU Open, we get the UK CPIs uh, for May. Both the headline and core CPI rates are expected to have declined to 0.5% year over year and 1.2% year over year from 0.8 and 1.4% respectively. Now, coming on top of a potentially soft employment report, slowing inflation in the UK further below the Bank of England's objective of 2% uh, may increase speculation that on Thursday, when we have the Bank of England meeting, policymakers will discuss the option of negative interest rates and thus the pound may come under selling interest. Eurozone's final CPIs for the month are also coming out, but uh, as it is always the case, they are expected to confirm their initial estimates. Later in the day, we get more inflation data for May, this time from Canada. The headline rate is expected to have ticked up, but to have stayed within uh, the negative territory. Specifically, it is expected to have risen to minus 0.1% year over year from minus 0.2%, while no forecast is currently available for the core rate. At the prior Bank of Canada gathering, policymakers kept interest rates unchanged and said uh, that given the improvement in short-term funding conditions, the bank reduced the frequency of its uh, term rep operations and its program to purchase bankers' acceptances. They also said that uh, the Canadian economy appears to have avoided the most severe scenario presented in the bank's April monetary policy report and that the economy is expected to resume to growth in the third quarter. Now, with inflation also near the bank's uh, estimates, all this suggests that as long as uh, coronavirus-related restrictions are lifted and as long as data continue to suggest that the worst is behind us, Canadian policymakers are likely to stay sidelined for a while more. The U.S. building permits and uh, housing starts for May are also coming out. Now on Thursday, we have three more central banks deciding on interest rates, and those are the S&P, the Northwest Bank, and the Bank of England. Kicking off with the SNB, no policy changes uh, are expected. The last meeting of this bank was uh, back in March uh, 19th, with officials refraining from touching the already low interest rate of uh, minus 0.75 percent. However, they strengthened their, interver their intervention language in light of the fast spreading of uh, the coronavirus, noting that they will intervene more strongly in the FX market. 
they also uh, added that the fund was even more highly valued. Uh, with, gov with governments around the globe easing their lockdown measures and economic data suggesting that the deep economic wounds from the coronavirus may be behind us, we don't expect this bank to proceed with any policy changes. After all, they haven't done so in March when every other central bank was expanding its stimulus efforts to fight the economic fallout from the coronavirus. That said, bearing in mind that now the franc is stronger than it was when officials last met, we believe that uh, they will stay ready to intervene in the FX market if things fall out of orbit. Now, passing the ball to the Norges Bank, we don't expect any changes from this bank, from this bank either. At its latest meeting, the Norges Bank cut its benchmark policy rate to 0% with officials saying that it will most likely stay at that level for some time ahead. We do not envisage making uh, further policy rate cuts, Governor Olsen said uh, in the accompanying statement. Last week, data showed that both uh, headline and core inflation accelerated more than anticipated, something that allows policymakers to sit more comfortably on the, side, on the sidelines uh, in our view. Last but not least, uh, we have the Bank of England. Uh, decision. At their uh, last uh, meeting, policymakers of this bank kept monetary policy unchanged. Via unanimous vote, they kept interest rates on hold, while with regards to their QE program, the, the vote was 7 to 2 in favor of keeping the amount of purchases unchanged. The two descenders, Sanders and Haskell, preferred uh, to increase the target uh, for the stock of assets uh, purchased by an additional 100 billion pounds with officials uh, noting that the current QE is set to reach its target at the beginning of July, we see it nearly certain that they will expand their purchases at this gathering, perhaps by another uh, 100 billion pounds, as the descenders suggested at the prior gathering. However, bearing in mind that uh, such a decision may be largely expected, we don't expect it to shake, uh, the, to shake the pound. We think that uh, pound traders will focus more on the language around interest rates. Remember uh, that in the aftermath of the prior gathering, Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey and Chief Economist Andy Haldane said that the bank is looking more urgently at negative interest rates. Thus, although they may not cut uh, rates at this gathering, it would be interesting to see how ready they are to do so in the, in the months to come. If there is intense talk with regards to the examination of negative interest rates, the pound is likely to come under selling interest, but the currency's uh, traders may also keep an eye on developments and headlines surrounding Brexit. On Thursday and Friday, an uh, EU leaders' summit is, set, is scheduled to take place, and we will look for clues on how far away the EU and the UK are in finding common ground. That said, ahead of the summit on Monday, uh, today, UK Prime Minister Johnson will meet with EU Commission President Von Delier, and thus uh, we may get an early taste from uh, headlines over uh, that event. EU leaders are also expected to discuss uh, the proposed coronavirus recovery fund. Most members support the plan, but the Netherlands, Austria, Denmark and Sweden are still skeptical. Now, for the plan to take flesh, it must be accepted by all members and any conflict may result in a decent retreat in the euro. Now, as for Thursday's data, during uh, the Asian session, New Zealand's uh, GDP uh, for the first quarter and Australia's employment report for May are coming out. New Zealand's, uh, New Zealand's uh, GDP is expected to have contracted 0.9% quarter over quarter after expanding 0.5% in the last three months of 2019, something that will drag the year-over-year -year rate down to 0.3% from 1.8%. Australia's employment rate is expected to have risen to 7% in May from 6.2%, while the net change in employment is forecast to show that the economy has lost another 125,000 jobs after losing 594.3 thousand in uh, April. Now, finally, on Friday, Japan's national CPIs for May are due to be released. No forecast is available for the headline rate, while the core one is expected to have ticked up to minus 0.1% year over year from minus 0.2%. Later in the day, we get retail sales data from the UK and Canada. 
the UK headline rate is forecast to have rebounded to 5.8% month over month in May from minus 18.1%, while the core one is expected to have inched up to 4.6% month over month from minus 15.2%. With regards to the Canadian numbers, headline sales are expected to have fallen 15.1% month over month in April after sliding 10% in March, while the core rate is expected to have tumbled to minus 12.8% month over month from minus 0.4%. So that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching and, uh, and listening. Um, I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again uh, next Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 7.30 a.m. GMT time. So goodbye and have a nice day. JFT just fair and direct.